What's up, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, with another New York Giants video. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you clicking on the video. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. That always helps out huge. Hit the subscribe button, ring a ding, ding the bell. Make sure you ring the bell. That way you know when I go live or do a video like this or anything like that. YouTube may not always notify you, but that's the best way you're going to know is by ringing the bell and clicking all notifications. Obviously, the Giants play Friday. I'll be live tonight at 10.30. We'll talk about the Giants practice today, and I'll react to some more player conferences and, uh, you know, coaching conferences or whatever. The Giants had a much better day at training camp today than they did yesterday, so we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. Come on by with the questions. Hang out. Let's get ready for some Giants football, baby. Anyway, I want to do a video about uh, Yahoo Sports uh, did a, um, it was about NFL betters saying that they're not high in the New York Giants. Not high at all in the New York Giants this year. This article is by Mark Drumheller. Okay, so I always want to give credit where it's due. Um, of course, we all know that the Giants, uh, the media hates the Giants. We know that. A lot of trash talk in this offseason about Daniel Jones and trying to drive that wedge between him and Saquon Barkley and a lot of unadulterated hate towards Daniel Jones and the Giants and all this other stuff. And a lot of times it doesn't make any sense. But that's what analysts have become. Uh, we know that, you know, they, much like me, I want the clicks, you know. But I'm giving you my honest opinion here. I'm not just saying stuff and and being all radical about it and, and whatever just to get you to click on the video. I'm just giving you my honest opinion, as you well know. So Mark Drumheller has an article here about why the betters, you know, he's, uh, where is he from? Uh, what that say he was? He's a betting analyst. You can take them with a grain of salt. Uh, <laughs> take him with a grain of salt take him like a meteorologist take him like a fantasy football player they know as much as you and i i don't know what a betting analyst actually does eh, they probably more, know more than me if anybody knows my uh record betting nfl games it sucks but i want to give mark credit uh for this reason i read this article it's on yahoo sports his argument for why they're not high in betting on the Giants is actually very good. It's well thought out criticism. Okay. I had a man after my own heart. Like when I criticize the usually I try to think about why I'm criticizing the guy. It wasn't just blind old adulterated hate. So let's go over a couple things here because um, again, I'm high in the New York Giants. I definitely think that they're going to be a playoff team, but I'm a Giants fan. So I may have some blind bias and some blind optimism going into the season. But Mark makes really good points here. He says, um, you know, talking about Dable having a great season with the Giants, turning him into a playoff team, took him by surprise. It says Dable, you know, started off 6-1 and one and quickly made headlines as the NFL surprise. He was pushing all the right buttons. Saquon was rushing over for 100, you know, rushing over 100 yards a game, and Jones was showing improvement despite limited weapons in the passing game. He definitely has weapons in his passing game. But he said, as many expected regression hit in the second half. Now, I don't know if I expected regression to hit in the second half. Then we dealt with some injuries. Our schedule got tougher. We played the Eagles twice. You know, we had the Cowboys off a short week. Did not expect to lose the Lions. Uh, that was one I did not expect to. I also didn't think we would lose to the Seahawks. But both Seattle and Detroit ended up being better than I thought they would at the beginning of the year. Um, it says the Giants, you know, dropped three, um, won all but three of their final eight games. They finished with a record of 9-7-1. We all know that. Uh, then they did win a playoff game in Minnesota, the first playoff win since we won the Super Bowl in 2011. It says the Giants took a huge leap under their head coach, but taking that second step is an even bigger challenge. Now, he's right. It is a bigger challenge. Number one, our schedule is tougher. Number two, we're not taking anybody by surprise this year. So teams are going to have to look out for the Giants. They can't just go in going, oh, that's the Giants. I mean, that's what a lot of teams did at the beginning of the year last year. <laughs> it's Giants. Richie James is their best player, or best uh, wide receiver. Richie James is wide receiver number one. Daniel Jones didn't get the fifth-year option picked up. You know, we got to worry about Saquon. And then there was rotating door of wide receivers all year and linemen. And it's, you know, maybe teams did take the Giants for granted. That won't happen this year. Uh, he says... I think it's very telling that the Giants' win total is seven and a half, just a small increase over last season seven. Well, I predicted the Giants win seven games last year. I'm predicting them to win about nine or ten this year. I think that's 
where my prediction is. I'll do a prediction video, you know, the week before uh, the season starts when I know our 53-man roster and I know the guys that are healthy, the guys that are not healthy, then I'll give you my thoughts on the season. Uh, he said, here are a few factors that have me betting that life is a little different in year two. Again, he's not hating here. He could be saying a lot of derogatory things about the Giants. He's not. Um, he said, you can believe a team's heading in the right direction, but it can still take a step back, and that's why I am with New York. The additional Waller and Hyatt um, has game-breaking speed, possibly developing a number one receiver. Uh, the Giants modestly improved the roster, but still lack playmakers on the outside. Now, Jalen Hyatt could be a playmaker on the outside. We have to wait and see on that. He's a rookie. I don't expect it, but there's definitely potential there. Uh, but try to pay your mortgage on potential. It ain't going to work very good. Uh, Darren Waller is going to be huge. I think Darren Waller is the key ingredient to the offense. Obviously, Saquon is, as is Daniel Jones. But as far as the receiving game goes, Darren Waller is the guy that really we're going to rely on a lot, I believe. And I also think Paris Campbell can stretch the field. Slayton can, too. Slayton's got to clean up the drops. But I do think the Giants do have outside weapons. I definitely do think they have a guy that can stretch a field, game-breaking players. I definitely think a guy like Hyatt has game-breaking speed. Campbell's very fast. We know that. Um... But he said, even entering the season, I talked about this the other night, the Giants are projected as the third lowest rated group in the NFL as far as the receiving core goes. So no love given there. Overall, it's an offense that'll go as far as Barkley can carry it. I think the passing game will improve. I think we will have bigger plays. But I do believe Saquon Barkley is the cog. We have to run the ball. I don't care if it's Barkley. I don't care if it's Breed. I don't care if it's Gray. I don't care if it's Robinson. I don't care who the tailback is for the Giants. Okay, Whoever it is back there, you got to run the ball if you want to be effective in the passing game. You have to. It's just the way it goes. You want to wear down those linemen, those defensive linemen. You want to control the clock. You want to convert first downs. You want to have long drives. That's what you want to do. You do that by running the football. Um, there, there you go. He says, teams, you know, once the Giants start 6-1, and one, teams adjusted to force Jones to beat them with someone besides Barkley. The number two pick was bottled up for 50 yards a game the final 10 weeks. Giants with these six and one. Now Barkley could have been worn down at this time as well. The Giants' schedule got much tougher. Okay, Dallas has a really good defense. Philadelphia's got a good defense. We played them three times, and of course the final game, even though it's counting three six and one, the final game, uh, you know we played our backups. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. Not that we would have beat Philadelphia. I'm certainly not saying we would have if we played our starters. They kicked our starters' ass twice last year, but you know I guess that does happen. Anyway, with Barkley, 58 yards, but again, he could have been worn down. And I don't I don't think that anybody went into the year, even in week one, and said, oh, got to look out for Daniel Jones. I'm pretty sure when teams looked at our receiving core, said, you know what, we got to stop Saquon. So I don't think that was a matter of teams adjusting and said, oh, God, we the you know, Giants are 6-1, we better stop Saquon. I, I don't think that was the case. I'm pretty sure that was always the game plan. It's just the Giants were running the ball better. Barkley was healthy, you know, completely healthy, not banged up, not tired, and they were able to run the ball. Um, it's the way, I, you know, I look at it. It says the Giants are ranked 28th in, in EPA per play and uh, 24th of 5.7 yards of play. I have little doubt Dable will make the most out of what he has to work with, but I think the roster limitations on both sides of the ball will be more noticeable in the second season. So, it very well could be, you know. Uh, he says, the road to rebuilding is paved by peaks and valleys. The schedule plays a major role. And this is the absolute fact. The schedule in the first six games is absolutely brutal. Okay. He says, the Giants face a major jump in the standings. It's a critical piece of information for evaluating win totals. Again, I, I agree with him. I don't agree with the win total. I think we'll win more. But again, I could be blindly optimistic. But this guy had a really good article, which is why I'm sharing this with you, because if more writers or, you know, media and more analysts were like him and gave the Giants, hey, this is why I don't believe it. They were thought out criticisms or thought out, you know, reasons. I give the guy respect. That's why I want to point out a lot of times I'm just talking about negative things. Guys say negative, you know, crap or whatever, just hating on the Giants. This isn't blind hate. This was well thought out. This is what, when, when a guy's a good writer, and again, he might never, he's just a betting analyst and he knows this stuff. So, I got to give him credit. He said, much of the success of the Giants, uh, they established early in the season. Uh, you'll hear coaches discuss this all the time, and it's something I definitely look for when targeting teams that may overachieve. It makes sense teams that start 3-0 and end up in the playoffs 75% of the time. Will the, winning builds confidence, which I've talked about a number of times. Maybe this guy watches my channel. I don't know. 
<laughs> I doubt it. He says it can have a dramatic impact on a young team. Completely agreed. Well, the Giants enjoyed a fast start last year. Tables are turned in 2023. Outside of the week two trip in Arizona, the Giants projected underdogs in five of the first six games. We play Dallas, prime time. We play Arizona. We fly all the way to Arizona. Then we play San Francisco. Very tough game, which is a primetime game. And then we play Seattle. It's at home, but it's another primetime game. I want to see that one's a Thursday night. So it's a short week. I, I'm pretty sure that's Thursday. I could be wrong. But we go to San Francisco, primetime game, fly all the way back to New York and play a short week. And then after we play Seattle on a short week, we travel to Miami and Buffalo. The first six weeks of this schedule is Brutal. This is why I said if the Giants get out of that two and four, honestly, I'll be really pumped. They could easily end up one and five here. If they finish anything, if they finished 500, I'll be enthralled. I mean, I'll be ecstatic. But if the Giants are going to get a good test of how good they really are. And again, going into the season, you hope everybody's healthy. So there's no excuses. We ain't got to worry about, oh, this guy's not there. This guy's not there. They're tired. I think the best time to get the hard part of your schedule out is when you're the freshest. But that's right. And he says an absolutely brutal start to the season. Team showed uh, stark splits last year against the league's better team. And that's a fact. We were only 2-7 and seven against teams that qualified uh, for the postseason. They were 7-0-1 against non-playoff teams. You're supposed to beat the teams you're going to beat. That's how you get into the playoffs. You beat the teams you're supposed to. So, you know, they did do that last year, but they did struggle against the better teams in the league. And you take a look at this. Dallas made the postseason. San Francisco made the postseason. Seattle, Miami, Buffalo, they all made the postseason last year. Or maybe Miami did, and I could be wrong about that. But Miami was a damn good team last year, so definitely could make the postseason this year. Um, So, you know, and then it says it'll be compelling to see how Dable handles the pressure. They had the thing with Barkley, you know, and they gave $104 million to Jones. So obviously it's all that. He says, if you're a believer in the Giants, my best advice is to use a schedule to your advantage. Uh, Cowboys and Eagles have very manageable schedules early. So the odds should widen between those teams and the Giants have the first four to six games. And he says, when I look at the landscape of the division, the Giants roster is more of a work in progress. He's right. We're still working. Uh, then Dallas and Philadelphia and the talent gap is pretty noticeable in, uh, you know, in the Eagles 38-7 playoff victory in the divisional round. Um, so I agree with all that. And he says, I don't think the Giants did enough in the offseason to get to that next level. And again, you can only do so much every offseason. You can't completely rehaul a roster. I do think the Giants did improve uh, offensively and especially up front on defense. But our secondary is still a big question. Trey Hawkins has been bowling out. There's no question about that. But I worry about the depth of our line, our uh, depth of our secondary. And I think our defensive line's got some better depth with the linebacking course still a little bit weak. And there's a lot of question marks still going in to this season. But uh, give me your thoughts, guys. I mean, let me know what you think about it. Do you think the Giants are definitely a playoff team? Do you think Mark has a good point here? Because I certainly do. And I just wanted to share a video with you, like I said, about a guy that um, can, you know, have a really good analyst and still, you know, criticize the Giants. I think he did it very professionally. I think he did it very well. And again, let me know what you think in the comments section. I'll see you later tonight at 530. I'm sorry, at 1030. It's a bad day. You dizzle him out. Peace.